Hey everyone, welcome back to the MedBros channel and it feels weird to be sitting here and shooting a video because we haven't posted anything for a while now. And make sure to watch the last video if you guys did miss out on it because I know it didn't go to a lot of people's sub boxes or recommend or anything like that due to the statistics that we can see. Uh, probably because of the wording of the title or something like that. I don't know. We had a couple issues getting it up. So if you guys missed out on it, make sure to check it out. But now let's get started with this video, which is all about tips for your guys' interviews. I know interview season for medical school is coming up. Even interview season for myself is coming up. I'm going to be interviewing for residency spots. And it's an exciting time, but definitely a little scary. I think out of the entire application process, I like this part the best, which is uh, maybe not a lot of people's favorite part, but I hate the application and all the papers and all the you know writing about yourself I absolutely hate that but I think going there and just being yourself and you know trying to find that fit for you as well I just find it super fun this is kind of geared toward medical student interviews but I'm sure these techniques work for whatever you're interviewing for all right so the first tip which is the basics make sure you take your shower make sure you know what you're wearing make sure you go get there on time make sure you sleep make sure you do all this basic stuff that a lot of people overlook um, some people go to sleep at like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. the day before the interview and it's going to show. You're going to, you know, have your eye bags, you look really tired. Um, make sure you get your sleep and make sure you know what you're wearing. So for the overall recommendation, I'm sure you can Google it, but the only tip I'll give is you want to be unique for sure, but you don't want to stand out like in a bad way. Like I know for my interviews, there was one particular interview where one of the guys wore like an orange suit, like a bright orange suit, and you're going to stand out for sure, but it's... It's debatable on if that's gonna help you or not. And with a suit like that, you're playing with fire. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> oh, horrible joke, horrible joke. So once we're past all that, you then get to the point where you meet some of the people that are going to be on the admissions committee or your professors that are going to be teaching you for the next couple of years. You'll start to interact with them and they'll like give speeches and, and you guys will discuss things. Make sure you listen very carefully on what these people emphasize and then you can use that later in your interviews. For example, if someone's giving a big speech about how they're so proud about the research that they do at their facility and they focus on research on this and that and this, you want to take notes during that entire first process so that you can bring it up during the interview. So even if you're not interested in whatever the research they're talking about, make sure during the interview you, you make it clear that you're interested in this school due to X, Y, and Z that you heard earlier that day. And along the way, make sure you are super nice to everybody, every single person, other students, other um, you know whoever is faculty is there you know even the people like directing you to where to eat and things like that be super super nice to all those people you don't want to be that one student that shows up and stands by himself or herself uh before all the stuff's going on make sure you get in there and mingle with people again people are watching you this entire time for medical school so when you're standing there uh and, and you just get there get into a group introduce yourself you know act like all smiles or chatty whatever it is even if you're dying inside like i was for a lot of this because i hate small talk and i hate these kind of situations you gotta get in there and force it and it is kind of funny because uh, everyone's got their like plastic smile on the entire time and your face starts hurting by the end of the day but you have to do it so you sit down make sure you smile you got your really nice handshake going that apparently the handshake is very important you guys have to make sure you practice your handshakes some people come in and like just miss the hand some people come in and try to do the whole like uh, 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 it's kind of a pound thing don't do any of that nonsense it's a nice handshake make some eye contact don't look into their eyes very deeply that's going to be really awkward just a nice solid handshake just don't make it weird it's pretty simple and and then let it go let the hand go and go sit down in your seat break the eye contact stop looking at them that's weird all right so when you sat down and there's butterflies and the questions start flying what do you do so to prevent any kind of blanking out on questions and because you're gonna be really nervous, you're gonna be really, really, you know, jittery, and you're gonna forget some stuff. I can guarantee you that. I remember during my first interview, interview before I figured all this out, uh, you just forget stuff. You, you forget some basic stuff. Uh, they'll ask you a question, and you've rehearsed it a hundred times, and uh, you forget stuff, and it's not a good look. So there are some. These are some strategies to keep everything straight, so you don't blank out and sit there. One thing you don't want to do, by the way, is you don't want to look up. So if somebody ever asks you a question and you're kind of unsure of what's going on, don't do this. Uh, if somebody asks you like, why do you want to be a doctor? Don't sit there and do this. Um, I want to be a doctor because, uh, 
when you look up like that, you're looking for a memorized answer. That It's just like some body language tips. You don't want to do that. If you want to think, kind of just look off in the distance, like think about it and just be like, uh, just give me a second, let me think about it. There's no harm in asking to do that. So the my absolute ultimate technique of how I feel I aced all of these interviews is compartmentalizing my answers. So this is super, super high yield for anybody going to interviews for any type. What you wanna do is you wanna have a collection of ideas and thoughts ready for a subset of questions. So what that means is if somebody asks you um, why do you want to be a doctor? You know, why are you passionate about medicine? Um, what sparked your interest in medicine? Do you see how these questions are kind of like a play on the exact same theme of questioning? What you want to do is you want to have an entire uh, idea and, and um, kind of monologue ready for all three of those that you can kind of modify here and there to fit the question, but they're all talking about the same idea. So you can talk about, um, for example, why you want to be a doctor. Maybe there was an experience, you traveled abroad and, and you know something sparked and, and you helped this one patient and you connect with them. Now you want to help people to that degree. You can use that kind of answer for all three of those questions I previously mentioned. They'll answer all of them if you just kind of weave it in and modify it just a little bit. That's the best technique I have for keeping everything straight and not forgetting uh, when you're when you're asked multiple multiple questions because there's just variations. It's not much really they can ask you. There's just variations on on the same kind of line of thinking. For example, if someone asks you when did you work best as a team, um, what was a difficult situation you were in. Um, what is a time where uh, you know somebody lets you down and how did you cope with it? All three of those can be answered by a time that you were working with like a classmate on a project and they bailed on you or or you know it was such a difficult project that you had to do X, Y, and Z. All of it can be answered with that one story. So you don't need to have a hundred different things in your head and you're not looking up to you know get all your memorized answers. You're just free flowing. You have this idea, you have this this monologue ready to go about this topic and you just you just go with it and they can answer like 10 15 questions you know as long as you vary it just a little bit uh, that is probably the ultimate technique to not get to not get flabbergasted and sit there and kind of just be dazed at, at all the questions being asked him and what goes along with that is you have to practice you have to have practice saying a lot of this stuff in an eloquent fashion before you showed up at the interview if you show up to the interview and you try to wing it it's, it's not going to come out pretty. It's going to it's gonna come out broken, jittery. You're going to have details that are messed up. And what goes along with that is make sure you have a ton of good anecdotal stories. Anecdotes aren't really uh, good in science, but guess what? When you're on, on TV and, and you see these hosts, like all these Republican and Democrat talk shows, these people are super powerful in the way that they convey their message because they use anecdotes. It's not the most scientific way. It's not the best points even. You don't even have to have the best points. You just have to have an emotional reaction from the person listening to your points. And how do you do that? There's no better way to do that than telling them about your anecdotal story so you can personally connect with the person. So have a bunch of anecdotal sto stories ready for whatever you could possibly be asked. So one of the most important questions to make sure that you're ready for are those really crazy, wacky questions that they like to ask. And if you guys watched our interview skit, you know which one we're talking about when we asked uh, Mr. Skip Johnson what part of the bicycle he was. Why these are so important is everyone's gonna have an answer for those other questions on why you wanna be a doctor and things like that. Those honestly are not the important questions. One of the important questions is when the unique questions come toward you and you have a unique and really solid backed up answer. For example, <laughs> when you are asked, if you could be any animal, what animal would you be? Don't blow it off as, I'm just gonna pick a cute animal. That's not what the question's trying to get at. And again, you'd be surprised at how many people just shout out an animal. So one of my friends was telling me while he was on the committee, he asked that question. And somebody said pandas. And the follow-up question is obviously, okay, why pandas? And there was no answer. The answer was, I don't know, pandas are cute. Or like, why not pandas or something like that. 
that is not gonna apply. These questions are super important. So make sure you have a really unique answer. You could have made it like pandas are so rare and you know, they care for their, their cubs or whatever. I'm like that, I'm caring, I'm this, uh, who knows, whatever you wanna say. Just have something ready. Make sure you're ready to think on the fly because these questions are the most important and they can throw anything at you. As for the why do you wanna be a doctor question, that's a question that gets a lot of people you know, worked up. Don't worry about that question as much. There's not much revolutionary you can do unless you did, you know, you went out of the country or something like that and you pulled out five kids out of a, out of a hole and you CPR'd all of them and then you, you know, found some inner meaning through all that and became a doctor. A lot of us just are going to have very similar answers to that question on we genuinely do want to help people. We genuinely see this career as fulfilling and we all have our little reasons here and there and you just express them to the best that you can and um, anything unique that you do have, throw it in there. You don't have to You don't have to reinvent the wheel with a question like that is what I'm trying to get at. This video is getting a little long-winded. I mean, I could talk about interviews for a long time. We didn't even get to the panel interviews of the MMIs. I might switch them up into parts, seeing how the interest for this video is. So make sure if you guys enjoyed this video, you like it, you comment, you share this video with anybody that might need uh, some advice on interviews. And make sure you guys check out our last video. I was really, really happy with that video, but unfortunately YouTube, again, like I can see the statistics and YouTube definitely screwed us with that one in terms of who they're recommending it to. So if you guys haven't watched it, I'm sure you'll love it. Make sure you go back and watch it. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for subscribing and liking and, and uh, being part of the Med Bros community. So see you guys later.